You've heard the term astroturf, right? The fake grass that's used on athletic fields and putting greens and those sorts of things. Well, maybe you've never heard about astroturf as part of a marketing strategy. Hi, I'm Dr. Patty Barch. I'm a traditional naturopath, founder and owner of Naturally Unbridled Wellness and naturallyunbridled.com, where we focus on wellness solutions, not disease management. This is Down the Ridge with Dr. Patty, where I give you seven to 10 minutes of holistic life and wellness information on my way to work. So there's something that I thought I would talk to you about today called AstroTurf. And the first time I heard about this was probably about seven years ago. And I watched a YouTube video by a former, I think it was CBS reporter named Cheryl Atkinson. It's not Cheryl Atkinson or whatever. It's Cheryl Atkinson. Okay. Anyway, AstroTurf. If you look that up on YouTube, it's she does a really good job explaining it. It's a TED Talk. Anyway, um, what it is, it's a fake grassroots movement. So a grassroots movement is bottom up, right? It's power to the people. It's um, the people seeing an issue that they want resolved and getting together and, and bringing it up and accomplishing it. So there's... Um, there's a thing called AstroTurf, which is a fake um, grassroots movement. And this is done by basically the, um, I'm trying to pick my words carefully so that, you know, I don't get so ghosted. Um, but it, the companies that make pills and things like that, so they do this by creating organizations that are like nonprofit charitable type organizations F things like and I don't I'm not saying these ones are specifically astroturf but things like the American Heart Association the Juvenile Diabetes Association uh, the Lupus Association okay all of these different types of organizations if you go back and you look at their funding, you can see that they receive a lot of their funding from pharmaceutical industries, um, which the pharmaceutical, oh, I said the words, um, those companies get to take a write-off by donating funding to these organizations. But yet, yeah, these organizations will often raise money um, to for research, right? To find a cure. Uh, one of the first things that that got my hackles up about these nonprofit organizations, and the reason why I stopped donating many years ago to any national or even international organization that is trying to find a cure for a certain condition, is when I learned that the Susan G. Komen Foundation had sued the Boy Scouts of America because the Boy Scouts of America were running some sort of fundraiser and in their fundraiser they used the words, the cure, which apparently the Susan G. Komen Foundation had like trademarked. So what happens is, um, you as a private citizen, you make um, a donation to, you know, you see that somebody that you work with, their family member is dealing with ALS or something like that. And so they're going to do a walk or some kind of drive for this organization. And you, as a like, regular straight up civilian, you pay money. Uh, you donate money to this charitable organization. And so you it, you can claim that on your taxes if it's noted as a registered as a um, nonprofit organization. You can take a little bit of money off of your taxes. So if you 
um, you know, donate a hundred dollars and you're in a 20% tax bracket, you save $20 on your taxes, blah, blah, blah. So, um, then this, you know, you do the walk and then this money goes to that, uh, charitable organization that then turns around and gives that money to, um, for research. So the pharmaceutical industries are getting donations. These are for-profit companies taking money from charities to um, pay for their research, even though these are highly profitable industries right? Highly profitable industries funded by charities. What The charities should not be giving money for research. They should be giving money for patients, victims, right? Like to support them and their needs. So maybe they need um, a wheelchair or meal service or something like that. Like that's a better use of that money. So this weird lighting today. I don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, so a lot of times what people don't realize is, uh, you know, when you're giving money to these charitable organizations, you're truly just funding the pharmaceutical industry with no return on investment. So I also no longer contribute funds um, to like my retirement or anything like that. I mean, I have money in there that I'm not pulling out because they rape you on the taxes with that. But um, you know, they just keep giving your money to for-profit industries so that those people can turn around and make more money that you end up paying for the product. So, you donate money to a, a, a non-profit charitable organization. The charitable organization turns around and gives that money to a for-profit um, industry. That company takes your charitable donation and um, uses that money to discover a treatment for a disease that you may have gotten. And then they charge you for that, um, <laughs> for that product that you pay to fund without any return on investment. Whereas if you were to buy stock in that company and that company were to take those dollars and, invest in finding a cure for something that they're going to charge you for, at least you will reap back part of the profits. So cut out the freaking middleman. Better yet, just get healthy so that you don't need those, um, those pharmaceuticals whenever possible. All right, peeps, have a healthy day.